Hi everybody, I'm Steve and I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee and you can see the sign behind me here. I'm at the Woodlawn Cemetery. It's about 10 miles south of downtown Nashville, I believe. And there are quite a number of very famous people buried here. And I'm going to see how many I can find today. In part one of this vlog, I visited nearly a dozen famous people who were interred here in the mausoleum. Today, in part two of this vlog, I'm hoping to find nearly a dozen more famous people who are buried here in the various lawn sections. So let's go see who we can find. So who remembers Dan Seals? Probably better known as England Dan and John Ford Coley. They had that huge hit, I Really Want to See You Tonight, back in the 1970s. He's laid to rest right here, just inside the front gate. You come in through the gates, right back here. I'm being attacked by a tree here. There are a lot of trees and hedges here in Tennessee. Later, he also had a very successful solo career. He died here in Nashville at the age of 61 from mantle cell lymphoma on March 25th, 2009. And just in case you didn't know, his older brother Jim Seals was part of the musical duo Seals and Croft. And in 1973, they had one of my all-time favorite songs, We May Never Pass This Way Again. Until coming here today, I didn't even know they were related. As I always say, you sure can learn a lot in cemeteries. So let's go see if we can find a few others. After coming in through the front gates, if you drive straight back toward the mausoleum, on the left-hand side, just before you reach the mausoleum, is the final resting place of country music legend Eddie Arnold. Arnold died here in Nashville at the age of 89 on May 8, 2008. He had nearly 150 songs on the Billboard country charts and was only second to George Jones. Jones is also buried in the cemetery not far away and I'll be visiting his gravesite next. The front gate is right behind that tree. Arnold was a member of the Grand Old Opry. He was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1960 and he sold more than 85 million records. In the section across the street to the east is where we'll find the final resting place of one of the other country music legends buried here, George Jones. He's laid to rest here in the gated Garden of the Grand Tour section. From 1969 to 1975, Jones was married to country singer Tammy Wynette, who's laid to rest just inside the mausoleum here in the cemetery. If you missed it, I visited her in part one of this vlog. Wow, George Jones, how cool is this? He stopped loving her today, the possum. And look at this great headstone. So nice. Great pictures. How many George Jones fans out there watching? I'm guessing quite a few. He died here in Nashville at the age of 81 on April 26th, 2013. And during his career, he had more than 150 hit songs. So it says, George Glenn Jones was and is the king of broken hearts. He sang of life's hardships and struggles in a way that somehow lined our own. His voice was effortless and unforgettable. He brought unsurpassed emotional eloquence to every song he sang. He was and is the soul of country music. No one will ever fill his shoes. He is at rest, but his music is alive and ageless. He gifted it to all of us, to the joyful and broken. Walk through this world with me, he sang, and we do. One of the questions that I get asked the most is why do so many famous people have such simple and ordinary gravesites and headstones? I'm happy to show you that Jones's final resting place is not simple or ordinary. He was obviously proud of his life and his accomplishments and created a very nice and memorable place for his fans to come and visit. And not very far away is the gravesite of country singer and songwriter Johnny Paycheck. And according to Paycheck's Wikipedia page, the plot was donated by George Jones. Who remembers his 1977 hit single, Take This Job and Shove It? It was written by David Allen Coe, and it sold over 2 million copies. Following a long illness, Paycheck died here in Nashville at the age of 64 on February 19, 2003. And just to the right of Johnny Paycheck is the gravesite of Gabriel Kerr, who died at the young age of 36. His name didn't sound familiar to me, but since he's buried in this very prominent section of the cemetery, I thought he might be famous, so I googled him. It turns out that he was one of the lost boys of Sudan, one of the 20,000 who were orphaned during the Second Sudanese Civil War, where two million were killed. 
Nearly 4,000 of the boys were offered resettlement in the U.S. back in 2001, and Kurt was one of the lucky ones to be among them. He died here in Nashville on March 26, 2016, but his Find a Gray Memorial page doesn't list a cause of death. And just a short distance to the right of Kerr, in this same section, right next to the fence, is the gravesite of James Raw Baronis. Baronis was a professional football player who played for a number of teams, including the Tennessee Titans. The road to success is lined with many tempting parking spaces. That's a great epitaph. Dream big, reach for the stars. Sadly, like Kerr, Baronis also died here in Nashville at the young age of 36. He was involved in a fatal auto accident on September 20th, 2014. At the opposite end of this section from George Jones's final resting place are the grave sites of two other country music notables. Billy Sherrill was a record producer, a songwriter, and a ranger who worked with some of the greats like Tammy Wynette and George Jones and Charlie Rich. He even co-wrote Stand By Your Man with Tammy Wynette. It's kind of neat that they're all buried here in the same cemetery. Cheryl died here in Nashville at the age of 78 on August 4th, 2015. And he's laid to rest here next to fellow songwriter Jerry Chestnut. Now Jerry Chestnut was just recently buried. You can see he died December 15th, 2018 here in Nashville and he was 87 years old and it's probably a pretty safe bet to guess that they were good friends when they were alive. Chestnut wrote hit songs for Elvis, Tammy Wynette and George Jones, Johnny Cash, Waylon Jennings, Porter Wagner and Dolly Parton, Eddie Arnold, Johnny Paycheck, Jerry Lee Lewis, Alan Jackson and many others. Now this section is located on the northeast side of the cemetery and my next stop is going to be the northwest section of the cemetery, just a little bit west of the pond, in the Garden of Gethsemane section. This is where legendary singer, songwriter, actor, and NASCAR driver Marty Robbins is laid to rest. During his career, he recorded more than 500 songs, 60 albums, and won two Grammy Awards. I'll pan around though so you can see the location. You can hear the train whistle off in the background. And that's actually Highway 65. That will take you right behind those trees. That's, uh, that'll be downtown Nashville. Another maybe 10 miles, I think. Robin's first number one hit song was Singing the Blues in 1956. The next year, in 1957, he had two more number one hit songs, The Story of My Life, and a white sports coat, which I still hear all the time on my local oldie station. But he's probably best remembered for his number one 1959 hit song, El Paso. That was a mega hit and became his signature song. It's hard to believe that Robbins was able to accomplish so much in his short life. He only lived to the age of 57, dying less than a week following quadruple coronary bypass surgery at St. Thomas Hospital here in Nashville on December 8th, 1982. Remember the huge 1973 hit song Drift Away by Dobie Gray? Well he's laid to rest right here in the Everlasting Life section not far from Marty Robbins who's just two sections over to the Northeast. It turns out that country singers Dale Stoney Cooper and Porter Wagner are also both laid to rest here in the same section as Dobie Gray and they were both listed on the map the cemetery gave to me but somehow I didn't notice until just now as I'm editing this vlog and looking at the map. There are definitely too many notable people here to visit in one day, but since Cooper and Wagner are so nearby, it is kind of irritating that I miss seeing their graves. While Drift Away was his biggest hit song, my favorite Dobie Gray song was The In Crowd, recorded nearly a decade earlier in 1965. Who else remembers that hit song? Gray died here in Nashville following cancer surgery at the age of 71 on December 6, 2011. This week I'd like to thank my latest Patreon supporter, Joshua Cohen. Thanks so much, Joshua, for your extra generous donation. I also want to thank all of you who have subscribed and have helped my channel grow in that way as well. So as always, thanks for joining me today at Woodlawn Cemetery here in Nashville, Tennessee. Until our next trip down memory lane, 
Happy travels, everyone.